Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli and I live somewhere in France in a town called Lyon. No, just kidding. In a, call, in a town called Paris. Welcome to episode 17 of my Photoshop Lightroom and Photography Tips. Last week, I showed you a shot I took from Corsica that was very uh, bad weather, very gray, and I tried to turn it into like a Caribbean island, very nice type of shooting. So this is the before and this is the after. This week, we are not going to use Lightroom, we are going to use Photoshop CS6 and the new blur filter that came out with CS6. I found a way to um, do a little trick. Uh, here is a portrait of my nephew who is also my assistant, Steven. That's just a regular studio shot. And using this new blur filter, we are going to get this result. Basically, it's a composite. It's very easy to do and it gives the illusion that we took him with a very expensive lens somewhere on the top of New York City or something like this. You will see it's a very funny trick and uh, let me show you how we do this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you a little trick that I found uh, using Photoshop CS6 which can uh, help a lot your portraits. Actually, it's a trick that I show on my Photoshop CS6 quick start course that you can find on my website. And um, here is the idea. This is a portrait I took in the studio of uh, my assistant and I want to change the background. I want to make a background like if I took him over the city lights with a very, very swallow depth of field with a you know a very high hand camera. And for this, I'm going to take this photo. Um, and for this to work, you need to have a photo with a lot of little lights, which is the case of this photo. So I'm going to drag and drop this photo on uh, here. I'm going to put it below uh, my nephew, which is my assistant. Tac, voila. So that photo is below him. Now I'm going to extract him really quickly using the um, quick selection tool. So, you know, I do a rough selection of uh, his, uh, his body and the hairs. Okay, when you get to... Um, when you get to this part, you just press the Option key and uh, the selection goes gets taken out. Voila. Okay, now I have a selection. I just refine that selection, making sure I have all this sweater. Uh, something like that here also. So what you can do is maybe zoom in a little bit. You know, press W to get the selection tool back. And just make sure you've got everything here. There's a bit of hairs missing. And... Uh, and basically that's that. Okay, now next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to save that selection. So select, you can go into uh, save selection. I'm going to call this Steven because that's his name. Okay, so I'm going to press command D to unselect. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to go on this layer and on this layer I'm going to use a new blur filter that you have uh, in Photoshop CS6. You have three new blur fil filters. Fill blur, iris blur, tilt shift. I'm going to use the first one, the most easy one, fill blur. And the idea of fill blur is that, um, well, uh, you can not only blur the photo like any blur filter, but you can add a light bokeh. Now check this out. If I press light bokeh and make it this, you know, very strong, uh, I get all these little round circles like if I had some bokeh, all right? Now these ones are a little strong. Um, if you want to make, uh, they're a little strong, you know, it's too, too bright. Uh, if you want to make them bigger, just make the, um, make the blur bigger. Now, if you want to make sure that the lights are not too strong, you can just use the light wrench and move the black slider to the right. And it's going to make them, yeah, something like that, less bright. Okay. So that's kind of nice. Um, that's kind of nice. Now I can just click OK and this will become uh, blurry. So the blur filter actually takes a lot of, of, of your machine to, um, to work. Then I just need to make sure that my blur layer is made bigger. So I press Command T and I just make this bigger. Oops. Oops, sorry. You make sure you press Shift so that your circles don't get all uh, uh, you know, not even, they have to say circles. 
Okay, something like that. Okay, so now we've got the background layer. Okay, I'm gonna get this gentleman back in. I'm gonna get my selection back. Load selection. Uh, here it is, Steven. Okay, I'm gonna press on the um, quick selection tool and I'm gonna go on refine edge. And on refine edge, you've got several options. You can your, your, you can refine your selection over uh, marching ants, over overlay, which is sometimes what I use, black, white, or on layer. And on layer, we can see the result in real time, which is cool. Then I just take my make my brush bigger by pressing Alt Control uh, on Windows or Alt Control on Mac, and I'm just gonna brush over the hairs to make sure that the refine edge brush picks up all the little hairs makes a natural blending of, uh, you know, makes it like if you were standing there. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do is a bit of smart radius, maybe, uh, yeah, two pixels. That's gonna make sure everything is, is settled. Uh, maybe uh, make a little bit of a smooth edge so that we don't have such a sharp edge. And basically that's it. Okay, so now he's on the, he's on that background. Now, uh, so that this is the selection, that's the result from the refine edge. I just have to click on the mask icon to have him back on the background. So here he is, you know, this are very, uh, this light looks like, you know, this part is brighter, so it kind of fits with the lighting of his face. And um, it's just that this is very warm and he's a bit cold. So if you want to change that, I can show you two ways to do that. The first is to um, go into the uh, selective color and uh, you just press the option key to make sure that the selective color um, is, you know, you have this small arrow, is gonna affect only the, the layers which is below it. Okay, and then you go and you take the neutrals, and there you can change the color like you want, like cyan, you can add or take off cyan. I'm gonna maybe add a bit of cyan to the left, but you have to go very gentle. Okay, magenta uh, to the right, or I can maybe add a bit of magenta, a bit of yellow. Uh, let's add a bit more. Yeah, I just wanna, I just want, yeah, to get the same mood. You see, just move this around. See, before, after, we have the same mood. Okay, last but not least, I'm gonna recrop the photo, so I'm gonna press the crop tool, which is here. I wanna make this a bit lower. Uh, maybe this like this. Okay, slightly recropped. And now, to make it even more that he was sitting there, I'm gonna press Control, Command, Alt, Shift, E which is gonna create a layer taking into account all we've done so far. I'm gonna put this into multiply mode, which is here. So the whole photo goes darker. Then I'm gonna take the um, uh, rectangle marquee tool, make a rectangle marquee. The idea is to make a vignette effect, but I like to uh, have it complete tailor-made. Okay, now that selection is a, is a very clean selection. So now we need to go to select, modified, feather, Let's go for 500 pixels to make a very feathered selection and then press delete. Okay, and the result is that we have a vignette. It's a bit of a strong vignette, so you can just lower your, lower your opacity. But voila, so we just went from this, oh sorry, from, um, from th this gentleman being alone basically to this. Uh, a little trick, but it can make your portraits, take your portraits to the next level. Okay, before we finish, if you go on my website photosearch.com and you click on the app store you, and you like this type of courses you've got about 10 different courses mostly on Lightroom and Photoshop you can buy all the Photoshop training here for $34 or all the Lightroom training for $26 or you can buy individual courses and I try to make them as easy as I can you get all the raw files you to be able to follow along and if you want to have the raw files from the podcast or want to see some back episode you can just click here on podcast and you, can, you just have the link from YouTube so you can watch all my podcasts from the start in case you missed one. And you can even purchase the raw files for each if you want to follow along. And it also helps me uh, finance this podcast. Well, thank you for being here, guys. And let's get back to the studio. I hope you like that tutorial. And uh, it's a trick that you can use in your day-to-day -day portrait retouching. I'm sure your client or friends will love it. Okay, this week inspiration is not a photographer, but many photographer, and it's an incredible magazine. It's called Lighted Magazine. It's a magazine that you can only see on an iPad. I think it's about $3 an issue. You can download the app from the App Store. It's made by my friend Scott Kelby, 
with a lot of uh, professional photographer uh, making articles mostly about light, flashlight, cobra light, studio lights, natural light. But there is some very nice beginner article. There is some other article which are a bit more advanced, but very easy to read, just pure example. And um, I learned a lot from this magazine. Okay, well, I hope to see you next week in uh, my next episode. And thank you for being here, guys. Bye-bye.